Hello, hello. Testing. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Tian Nguyen. I'm the program co-chair of the, this year, AC 2017. And um, today, uh, we're starting the second day with the keynotes uh, uh, speaking. Um, today, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Professor um, Jia Wei Hang. He's a professor at University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign here. And uh, he's a well-known researcher in, uh, info, in data mining, knowledge discovery, uh, he is a fellow of uh, ACM, uh, both ACM and IEEE, and he has so many awards that I can't even remember. Uh, so, including the uh, um, ACM SIGKDD Innovation Award, IEEE Computer Society Technical Achievement Award, um, Wallace McDowell Award from IEEE Computer Society, and um, I have been experienced to uh, learn from his uh, innovation in my own work of uh, mining software repository, mining software data, uh, where I look at the, uh, uh, the graph uh, mining algorithms. And today, uh, we had the privilege to uh, listen to him on uh, mining structure for massive data from text uh, with help software engineering. So, uh, welcome. Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, our organizers, the conference organizers, especially my colleagues at UIC, they invite me say, why you don't give a talk in our software engineering conference? I said, I'm a data miner, you know, I'm really outside. I may not talk something people may like. You just say, no, you just uh, say something because the software engineering now, the conference, the researchers, a highly interdisciplinary. They brought in, brought out many, many interesting things. Okay, people working together. So that's the reason I think it could be good. I did a very tiny letter on mining software engineering data. But recently I did a lot on mining text data. So I was thinking how these two things can link together. So this one, this talk is essentially saying whether the big data, big knowledge, of course, you get a challenge, you know, for, for the people in software engineering as well. Besides big code, we have big repository, we have lots of activities. So the problem becomes whether we can mine the software repository and software data in a very systematic, you know, intelligent way, okay? But if you look at the, the big data, uh, besides software engineering, you really go to social media, go anywhere, the text data, those unstructured data, actually take the majority. If you really look at it, people will get a statistic, say 80% of data actually are unstructured, uh, written in natural language, you know, in text forms. Okay. So the problem becomes whether we will need to mine the software, you know, text data as well. So what I have been working on the text data, essentially we have several keywords to mine it. The first keyword is we say structuring. That means the text data is highly unstructured. Okay. How can we dig structure out of text data so we can build something relatively structured? Then we link those things together, form you know, cubes, form networks, then we can mine it. So, uh, essentially, my three keywords on my mining on the unstructured data is structuring, the networking, and mining. Okay. So let's just uh, look at uh, software. Uh, of course, you, you are expert on getting detail into the code, into the execution sequences. There are lots of things that you have been doing. But I'm thinking about what about software repositories? For example, GitHub, now everybody, not only software engineering people, everybody put their code into GitHub, okay. But GitHub is not just the code, because there are lots of other things inside, you know, they support, people can search, can use, can mine, can, 
can do a lot of things interesting. And also there are lots of community, actually, they are using GitHub, they form different kinds of communities. Some people are developers, some are users, some, you know, just uh, for fun, just uh, comments on the different parts, okay? So what I'm thinking is, if we think the software repository, like GitHub, uh, if this one we think is, it is a multi-dimensional one. For example, you think about GitHub, we have languages, we may use Python, may use Java, may use C++, but you have lots of different functions. You think about it like uh, we may have some, some software working on database, on cube, on tensors, on convolution ne neural networks, on random forests. There are lots of different functions there and the different implementations, and you may want to find a similar you know, software okay, uh, with different languages, different implementations. So there are lots of things we can do just the thinking about the build a data mining functions on GitHub, okay? So my talk actually thinking about, we may have two kinds of things related to GitHub. One could be just build on GitHub repository itself to help people search, help people, you know, like uh, develop and use other people's, some of the functions. The other one could be the social data, like people actually, uh, getting into the GitHub, they, they may want to have a com communities, okay, discussing things, commenting things. So I just show you, uh, the, for example, the very popular our data miner using one, for example, GitHub one page is TensorFlow. Okay. For TensorFlow, you probably can see this part. Actually, this part is more or less like uh, just to give you uh, the different, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, related software or related tools, and you may have some really code on the top. You have, you may have the keywords. So this one actually related to TensorFlow, machine learning, Python, deep learning. The, that essentially is multi-dimensional thing, right? But on the other hand, they really have lots of text. Okay, some even have the papers. So they attach the PDFs or something. They get into papers. But at least you get it the minimum one, the text, help people to say, you know, what it is for and how do we use it, okay? Those things uh, we call text data. So we get it, of course, you are expert on really getting into the code. You can say, I actually can even say, take some part of code and compare it with the other parts. But even we think about the text, okay? That part is very useful if we can mine it, we can structure it, so people actually can search in a very broad way, okay? So let's look at this. In the past, uh, my group actually built something called text cube or event cube. Okay, I just give you the simple design when the, the, the project started from, uh, I think 2008, around that time, NASA actually funded us one project. The, the, the story was, NASA got lots of they call aviation incident report. That means the pilots, the maintenance people, they found anything unusual, anything worth noting, they put notes, okay? They say, this is the flight, this is the time, this is the airport or something, but the remaining one is just text, okay? Some people, just the pilots say it, they, they, they just change them into text form, okay? So once you get such huge, big data, the problem is, you get millions of records, and people in many cases, they, they may not know how to use it. But actually, NASA people told us, if you really study these notes, just give you a simple example. Uh, I think it's about a year after September 11th. New York airport got one plane crashed. They just, just they took off, then they went down. Okay, it, over probably one or 200 people died. Okay. So actually, that one was, them originally think that there's something related to terrorists. And then later they found actually was the tailwind because the bigger airplane just took off, they have a very huge turbulence. You cannot see it, okay? The second airplane follow it so close, it lost the control, okay? But actually this tailwind for this particular airplane, they later checked in the aviation report, they did have this. Some pilots said, 
I took off after this, this, this type of airplane. I almost lost my control. Okay. And no, he put in, nobody noticed. Okay, if this thing, mine earlier, they set up a regulation, say, must sometime gap, the other one can take off. You can save life, right? You can see this repository is very critically important. Okay. So what we did is we took this, we actually get into the multi-dimensional data cube. That means this could be flight or airplane or time or something. In the middle, it could be collections of the text data. And we may be able to mine it and finding some common things or important things. Okay, so that's the story. We actually start mining the text data in a more systematic way. Okay, so since this one, we actually later, Army Research Lab, they find us working on something. We also found, they find us working on information networks. Then we also found information networks, a very important thing actually so how to understand the text associated with those networks. Then we start developing quite a few technologies. Here I just give you our framework, even for the information network or cube, how we mine it. You can see is we start from unstructured data, which are just like newspapers, reports, like uh, aviation incident reports, see it, okay. But we have some general knowledge base, like a wiki or something, we, we, we know this. But the problem is, you don't want the people to substantially give you labels or marking or curation, because that's very time consuming. It is not a scalable, okay? So what we want to do is we take this to do the phrase mining, to do the typing, to construct the cube and networks, with Cuban networks, we will be able to systematically mine this data, this unstructured data. Okay. So I'm going to introduce you some of the work. One is we call phrase mining. Okay. Actually, this afternoon, I'm going to fly down to AIR because it's their tech transition day tomorrow. They want me to represent my group to demo several software. One software actually is phrase mining. What is phrase mining? We know the text consists of lots of single words, but they compose the phrases, it makes sense. For example, if you say United States, it's a phrase. But if you just give me United, I actually do not even know what you're talking about, because it could be United Airlines, United Kingdom, right? So if we know this, the phrase is so important, so basic, we want to automatically grab those phrases out without anybody labeling training, okay? And actually, we did it very successfully in the sense Nowadays, for example, yesterday, Army, they tried to play tricks. They were thinking whether our demo, actually, we have some can thing, we have some labels. Yesterday, they sent us a big fire, say, this is the Army report, okay? Your demo should work on, should demo this one. It simply says, they don't give us any lay time. They just give the data, so you demo it. How do you mine this huge documents, giving me all the nice phrases? And we actually show them, not only we can mine this without anybody train us, we actually can show you, you give us Spanish, give us French, give us Chinese, we immediately can mine very high quality phrases. Okay, so how we do this? Actually, very interesting one is statistics, simple statistics. I just give you a simple example, you can see, even you came from Mars, you know nothing about English. You can mine very nice English phrases. Just give you a simple example, okay. Everybody in data mining knows support vector machine, okay? But if you look at those uh, computer science research paper titles, okay? If you came from Mars, how could, you, how could you know these three things should get together as a support vector machine is a phrase, okay? So actually it's not that hard because suppose Martians can count, okay? As long as you can count, everything's fine, why? Just think about this, we know standard deviation, right? And we also know if something is three standard deviation away, it's very rare, okay? Then you just look at this, okay? Look at, the, suppose you count the support, which probably is one over a thousand ratio. You count the vector, it's one over a thousand ratio. They get together, okay? 
if they random, they have no relationship. They get together, should be one over a million. Right? But you go over two million titles, you find support vector getting together is far, far over one over a million. Okay. How do you explain it? You, you can count, you can say, this one, actually the, the tightness is, if you calculate the z-score, is three standard deviation away. Actually, we calculate it's 12 standard deviation away. Okay. How could you explain these two getting together? They glue together, right? That means they must be part of the phrase. Okay. Then you get a machine, even get together. Get together is a standard deviation way. That implies the support vector machine must be a phrase. Okay. So of course there are other tricks like getting some force, you know, something. Uh, for example, vector machine. Vector machine is not independent because every time you get a vector machine, you get support vector machine. So in that sense, vector machine is not an independent phrase. It's just part of it. Okay. So we do this trick. Actually, we can we use uh, four properties. Popularity, you see, this thing must get in together more popular. Like information retrieval is more popular than cross-language information retrieval. The information retrieval should be ranked higher. Okay. Then if you look at the concordance, they glue together, you probably can see you may have strong T, but you barely say powerful T. And you may have powerful computer, you barely say strong computer. Right? That's just, you know, you glue together in different ways. And of course, you glue together too often, like this paper or you know, something that doesn't make sense anymore. It becomes stop words, right? And the completeness simply said vector machine is incomplete because every time you get it, you get support vector machine. With this, you probably can see this one is without anybody trained, okay? We just go down to Yelp, we mine the phrases, and then we feed in to typical topic model. You probably know David Bly invented this topic model. David Bly, two years ago, came here to give a talk, give a distinguished speech. In my office, I, could just, I just showed exactly the same slides. He was astonished. Why? Because if you just look at the single word, probably that's not a, you know, that telling. But if you look at the, those phrases, you just look at this one. Ice cream, iced tea, French toast, harsh brown, this is almost like a McDonald's manual, right? They really glue together like one topic. And this could be another topic, this could be another topic. It, it does make a lot of sense, right? He actually got surprised, say, how do you do it? We said, we first mine the phrases. Then we do topic modeling, you know, similar to what he did. But the result is very different. It's quite striking. The problem is we also found if without anybody trained, the result, you still get some phrase not in that high quality. Then later we say, what about we give a very small num training set, okay, labeling set. We only label like 300, give 300 labels, like a positive or negative, okay. Then we actually compete with uh, Stanford MP chunking, non-phrase chunking, okay. You probably can see that's a result we mine the KDD conference. This one is our software, we mine this, the red one, like time series, gene expression data, frequent subgraphs, or categorical attributes. That's the one, the name, name chunking method, the non-phrase chunking method did not get this, or rank very low. And we did not rank those blue ones high, like important problem, effective way, small set, because it's not so specific to KDD, it's, it's almost anything, right? So you probably can see the quality, Another interesting thing is, we said 300 labels. People say, we still don't want to give 300 labels. They involve human, right? You, you give me medical documents, you give me army you know, uh, documents, everybody has to carefully select 300 labels. It's not scalable. We say, fine, we don't need 300 labels. We just need a Wikipedia. That means, if you mind English, give us an English wiki. You mind Spanish, give us Spanish wiki. Same thing, you give a Chinese wiki, we can mind Chinese documents. And what we did, essentially this. You take the wiki, wiki has lots of those titles, like Barack Obama, okay? Like Anderson Cooper, you actually will find their names in Wikipedia, right? So those are the good, positive phrases, okay? But 
actually Wiki did not show something which you think is negative, actually may or may not be negative. The, the problem, that's exactly the problem. You get free, you get 100,000 positive data because of Wiki entries. But I just show you one example, like Obama administration, okay, which is a good phrase. But you go down Wiki, you find Obama administration, you won't find an entry, okay? So that means it's not in Wiki, not necessary, it must be negative, okay? So we actually took this. The interesting thing is we develop is we have a very large positive pool. We have very noisy, but not too noisy, like 10% false positive, okay? Or false negative, I should say. That means the negative pool, actually, you, it's a little noisy. You think it's negative, not in the wiki, actually something still positive. But if you get a very large one, you do the random forest, you do the ensemble, the voting is very trustful once the data becomes really large because you have 100,000 positive ones. So the final result is very high. We actually, uh, this the, the study, we use, this is DBRP computer science, this is Yelp data, social media. This is English wiki. This is Spanish wiki. This is Chinese wiki. Okay. Then you probably can see we get it into like you can mine this one. You almost can freely, quickly getting hundred thousand, you know, uh, very high quality phrases from any corpus. Uh, for example, this one is a Chinese. Anybody can read Chinese one. The interesting thing is this is almost like one hundred thousand. We still can find a very high quality. Remember, Chinese actually is pretty hard to mine because there's no, no space between words. You, if you think about it, you get English, no space between words, nobody even can read it, right? But if you mine this, like the last one was very interesting because those, only the, the, the Chinese government media have this problem. It's hard for us to even translate. We call this one controlled guidance of the media. I mean, they control the media, right? So to some extent, it's true, okay? So then not only you get a phrase, you actually want to get what is the meaning. If you came from Mars, you only give me phrase, I could not understand it. I just give you a simple example. This one is from Yelp. The Yelp said the best barbecue I've tasted in Phoenix or something. How do you know this barbecue is a food? It's not a, some strange abbreviation acronym, okay? How do you know Phoenix actually is not a bird, but it's a city, okay? So can we automatically get this? Okay, if you say I came from Mars, I have no way to know it. But we have the wiki, right? The wiki may say Phoenix has a chance to be a bird and I have a chance to be a city, right? So what we did is use distance supervision. That's distance means we don't ask anybody to label this text. What we do is you give me massive text. What we use Wikipedia, we build the links. But remember, the Wikipedia can only link a small portion. We got statistic, we check the social media like a year. We actually found only 7% of those good you know, entities linking directly to Wiki. Okay, 93% is not linkable, not directly linkable. But the problem is, if it's not direct linkable, we may build some bridges to make it gradually linkable if your data set is large, okay? So there are several challenges. One is the people giving you the media could be very special, okay? They have no labels and they keep changing, like uh, tweets, okay? And another thing is they have lots of ambiguities, okay? The ambiguity, just give you a simple example, like Washington, okay? What is Washington? Washington well, could be a person, could be a state name, could be a city name, could be a sport name, could be a, you know, avenue name, right? So since Washington is so ambiguous, there are so many things, and we need to build a bridge based on the context to resolve the ambiguity. But the context is also very tricky. You look at this context, okay? This is about the Japan tsunami, okay? It, it, the, the newspaper, when the journalists write, they write so many different ways, may mean the same thing. You just think about this. This one said that the, the magnitude 9.0 quake caused widespread devastation in some city. The other one said a ravage or something. There are so many different ways to say it, and you, you definitely don't want to read newspapers, they have only one word to say it, okay? 
And then how do you cluster them? Say they are the same thing, okay? So what we did was you get those phrases and take those phrases, linking them together based on the functions, verbs, you link them together. We have entities and the relations, we link them together. We actually even mark if this one is in the front or this one is in the after of this verb or, some, or proposition, okay? You can do this. And with this, what you really do is you take limited labeling in wiki, in those distance you provide the knowledge base, and you actually try to, based on the clustering, to propagate the symbols, the, the types to the other one, okay? And the other one, once they build in, they actually can build more bridges. So you can propagate again, though this one essentially is a, is a iterative process if you really read the formula, it's a kind of an optimization. You have an object function, you can, you can do mention correlation, you can do type propagation, you can do relation phrase clustering. And the three functions, you iteratively refine them. Finally, you can say which one is ranked higher, okay? Actually, our KDD, this uh, class type, this uh, method, we actually compare with Lots of very famous, because nowadays everyone is open source, we make ours open source as well, where everybody can check it. So you can see this is a pretty large New York Times corpus, or Yelp, or Yelp corpus and Twit corpus. Okay, so you probably can see, of course, Twit, everybody is lower, because it's, it's hard, okay? Uh, especially if you do not do training, okay, or uh, labeling. But if you look at the New York Times and Yelp, actually it's pretty useful, right? To, to the instant, you really can use it in practice now, okay? Then, that's a general type, okay? But once you get into specific type, you still need more work. Just give you a simple example. We, everybody knows Donald Trump is a person, okay? That's, uh, the person type is very clear. But, you won't know what kind of person in this context. Actually, if you look at the, the, the three different uh, sentences, one sentence said that Donald Trump uh, spoke in a Republican presidential, you know, like a, a presidential candidate to speak in. A, it, once you know that the, uh, Donald Trump is a, is a politician, at least in a big category. But if you look at the second one, it said Donald Trump's company threatened to withdraw withhold $1 billion of UK government or something. That sentence means Donald Trump actually was a businessman, okay? The third one said Donald Trump, uh, the Trump's TV reality show, The Apprentice. That one means Donald Trump is an actor, right? So actually, Donald Trump in different sentences may play different roles. That means we get a, a person type, is a general type. You want to refine type. You want to say, in this context, what kind of person Donald Trump is, right? So in that sense, we actually need to not just recognize the rough type. We need to go down to the refined type. The refined type, you use those uh, propagation is more difficult, okay? But uh, the recent development, especially Google has those word to vac okay, this kind of embedding methods. We actually use embedding methods. We found, you, for example, okay, Hillary has only one type, it's politician. Okay, but once you embed Donald Trump, this sentence with Hillary so closely, that Im Im implies in this sentence, actually Donald Trump is more like a politician rather than like a businessman. Okay, so this embedding actually works quite nicely. We actually further develop the called co-typing. That means not only type the entities, but also type relations together okay, in the iterative refined way and we can get a very good high performance. This is the performance we compare with many other, like, uh, you know, embedding methods. You use typing, relation typing, co-typing, getting together, get a very high performance, okay? So that's why is you get a typed, but actually in the real sentence, when people are writing things, there are lots of things. You actually can find patterns, okay? What we do is we try to find a meta pattern try to immediately get it into, you know, give the, uh, give the entity attribute and a value or dig it out, uh, or dug out, okay? So you probably can see this. 
I just give you a simple example. Suppose we, actually this one is a real example in a wiki set. Present blast from Paris, garment of Burkina Faso was found in some something. Okay. For human, you have no problem to understand it because you see this is present, that must be present name. And a garment of this must be a country. Actually, this is a tiny country in Central uh, West Africa, okay, uh, Central East Africa. Okay. But you, what you see is this, uh, this uh, name, both present name and country name you do not know. Okay. How can we recognize, we actually can extract the facts from this text, say actually we know this is the country name and this is the present of that country. Can we get this? Okay. You probably say you need a labeling, you need a human. Okay. What about we have no human, nothing, whether you can get it? Okay. The interesting thing is, if you say this one is a present compare, you probably do not know, but what about it? we said a present, you know, Barack Obama, government of United States, got some something, okay? Then everybody say, I know this. You actually can find lots of such things in the newspaper, okay? So you probably can see is, if you want, there's something you know in the wiki, but if you want to do propagation, you need to find patterns. Actually, there are patterns so close. That's exactly how a human can understand it, right? You don't have to let people laboring you this sentence because you know Obama, you know this government, you know United States, you can understand this one. So that's the same thing. The, if you do mining, you can get this as well. You probably can see. If you get mining, this different statements, you can summarize them into like two patterns. One is present person, the government of something. The other one is the country's present of some, someone. Okay. Especially the second one is much more popular. You immediately get a present the country and the name or the relationship. They are, you know, the same cluster, or, or we call synonym patterns. We actually can mine just based on the major pattern is so close you get a major pattern, synonym pattern getting together, you can form clusters, then it will help you to extract the facts out of the text, okay? For example, you can extract the country, you can extract the person's age, okay? And uh, uh, just to give you an example, once we do this, we do the experiments, we get it, give us the corpus, and you probably can see, uh, give us this uh, news corpus without anybody trained, okay? We immediately found United States, of course, the, that one, the Trump was not, a, not a, there yet. We show that the present is Barack Obama, Russia is Vladimir P. Putin. We actually found the small countries present, right? Blast bon Comparing. And we actually found all those uh, different uh, uh, CEOs of different companies. Some are very big, like Apple and uh, Facebook, or some pretty small, we never seen them. But of course, you say that's not a hero. But you look at this one. This actually is not easy. You think about this. We go for, use the same algorithm, go down to PubMed. Okay. Then we can find some treatment was you, uh, uh, some, some kind of methods or drugs actually was used to treat this disease. You find the disease and treatment that pairs. You probably can see those are the disease, these are the treatments. And this one said uh, which bacteria is, was resistant to certain antibiotics. You probably can see, we found lots of those bacteria is resistant to a particular antibiotics. Without anybody labeling, you go down to the PubMed, you actually can get a very big table by yourself, okay? So that's about, we call a patent discovery, okay? Another interesting one is taxonomy mining. That means you give me a lot of documents. I actually, from this document, I want to find for example, computer science, on the top, you may find data mining, networking, computer vision, software engineering underneath. Then within each one, for example, machine learning, you may find a clustering, reinforcement learning, deep learning, Bayesian networks. Can we do that automatically without anybody trained? Okay, so the interesting thing is we actually developed the method called adaptive sparing clustering. That means at the top level, you try to use embedding to get those things, the cluster things, because they mention together, likely they are close. But you know, you get a different documents, 
you know, you try to cluster them based on the correlation, and also you try to do the comparative analysis of each cluster. And something not clear in any cluster, you just push, on, push up. Like computer science, you can push on the top. Okay, like algorithms, methods, you can push on top. But like machine learning or information retrieval, you can separate them, okay? And a very important thing is once you go down, the upper part could influence you, interfere you to make a good clustering. Okay, just think about this. Okay, suppose you got information extraction. If you look at the global camp, uh, corpus, you actually find information extraction is very similar to text mining, NLP, machine learning, or even more general things. Okay, actually that interfere you to see the more refined, you know, what is sibling of information extraction, or what are the children of information extraction. What we do is we do local embedding. That means once you get into this part, all those upper part or sibling part is gone, okay? That means if you do information extraction, you get those papers, you get those are close papers closer to information extraction, you get rid of the other papers. You only look at this one. You know the others are more general concepts, you put it down there. The, the local one, you do the local embedding. Okay. Then you get a very good, uh, very good hierarchies. This is a purely automatic generated from DBRP. You probably see, we, of course it's a larger one, you probably see something like, we have a learning algorithms. Of course, the, the core, we do not say machine learning because machine learning in the in the paper actually did not appear as frequent as the learning algorithms. Then information retrieval, they do appear quite frequent. So you, if you look at information retrieval, you go down, you have you know, retrieval effectiveness, interlingual, RDF, text mining, web search. And each one, they have a cluster of uh, phrases. And here you, you get a learning algorithm, you go down, you get have neural networks, kernel discriminant analysis, reinforcement in classifier Bayesian. And you go down neural networks, you actually find there's, a, you know, uh, of course you cannot see it clearly, but they have, you know, like a fuzzy neural networks, SOM, forecasting, back propagation, they have different clusters. All these done automatically, okay? And another thing is constructing cube, okay? You, we know we want to build a multi-dimensional database. But the pe people say, who give you this multi-dimensional one? If I know this TensorFlow is machine learning, I put, put down into deep learning, put down there, you have hundreds, thousands of entries. Who will do this job? Okay. We want it to be automated. Okay. How can we automate it? Okay. We did a one interesting study, how to automate this process. We take New York Times, those kind of uh, you know, uh, big, uh, they contain everything. The interesting thing is uh, human people can easily set up some dimensions. For example, in New York Times, you can say one dimension is time, year, 2015, 2016, 2017. One dimension is location, like USA, China, Russia, Germany, you can send this. One dimension is topics, general topics, like sports, politics, economy. We set up this, but there are millions of newspapers, articles, how can we put every article into the right place? That's a problem, right? So what do we do is we only keep those human giving labor like this, okay? Then can we automatically put all these articles into the right location? That's a big problem. Actually the problem, what we did is this, okay? The first thing is if you want to put in the right one, you look at this one, look at a hundred thousands of those uh, uh, contents of, you know, for example, this one, you, you see there are some problems. One problem is, you give me this one, they have many dimension things. You, you think about this is a Super Bowl, actually it's a sports. Like Chicago, Illinois, it's a location. The 2017 is time. You know, the NFL is, is a sports again, okay? So you have, a, in one article, you have a many dimensions, many themes, they intertwine together, okay? How can we recognize which one, which signal is for which dimension or which topic? Okay. The interesting thing is we actually took this. The first interesting thing is we do, we embed everything. 
Okay, that means we actually embed your labor, including sports, you know, location or economy, all these things, together with the documents. But then we do document focalization. That means which word really belong to which dimension and which topic. Okay, the interesting thing is this. You, if you look at that, suppose we look at stock market, okay. You actually say the stock market, I do not know which dimension it could be. Uh, uh, the, the, the first thing could, the, 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 the one, let me just look at this, yeah. The first thing is you actually see that their interesting thing is, the stock market is a topic or it's a location? Of course, you, you, uh, for human, you say, oh, it's a, it's a topic, it's not location, because stock market, Chicago and, uh, you know, has a stock market in New York and uh, anywhere, right, in the world. But the, how do you recognize the stock, the stock market should belong to the topic, not belong to location? The interesting thing is, these are the topics, these are the locations. Okay, then you look at their distribution. Okay. If stock market belongs to certain location, it will tier to that location. But now stock market is more uniform, distributed in China, USA, Japan, Germany. They all have stock market, so they're Frequency is more like a evenly distributed. But you look at it on the topic, you probably can see economy, sports, stock market is not sports, not art, right? So you probably can see this one, the stock market is tiered to one topic. That means actually stock market is a topic word. It's not location word, not time word, right? You can see that it clearly. So we use this, just to look at the locate, we take a phrase, we measure this, say this one actually is indicating of the topic or indication of the time or indicated location. You can easily distinguish them based on this distribution. Once you distinguish them, you actually can say this one belongs to which cluster. You actually can clearly see stock market belongs to economy, right? So with this, you, you only have like economy, politics, or sports or something. You look at the newspaper, you can grab lots of very clearly distinguishable words to you, then you, you get a weapon. Because for you, you say, this is about topic, and this is about my topic, not yours. Then immediately you get, grab lots and lots of very good words. And those words can help you to put the documents into the right set, okay? So we actually show our master get a very high accuracy once you try to put those documents in. Once you put document in, you can explore this cube. Actually, this scroll cube is very interesting. For example, you can do the cloud tag. You can you can do you know like uh, you know many many other analysis. I just show you. For example, you can construct the, the network, or you can look at all the different events. Okay, and you can actually give the you can mark these documents, rank them and you can actually show all the distributions, okay? i just give you one simple example. Actually, we actually uh, dig out the 2013 New York Times. Uh, one interesting, in January there's a, I think it's Heidi earthquake, okay? Then we look at donation. Then you actually can see who donated how much, okay? Like a Red Cross. Actually, we found that even Hillary Clinton, you know, donated that time, not too trivial, so we actually can see the bar charts. So you probably can see, to that extent, you actually can see the distribution, okay? So there are lots of things can be done. But interesting thing, one interesting thing we did was we want to make our comparative analysis very sharp, okay? People know the document can be classified, or you can take the words, you can say this one belongs to this class, but it's not as sharp. The reason is, you, once you have the cube, you have the comparative analysis, okay? I just give you a simple example before I go down there. Is I just give you a simple example like a, a China economy. We, we analyze these two dimensions. Uh, we want to see what are the most important words indicating the China economy, okay? The interesting thing is, because now you're sitting on the cube, one dimension is the economy, politics, sports, art, okay? 
One dimension is China, USA, Russia, Germany, okay, those things. Actually, now you have the weapon, because you grab a word, which is very frequent in this uh, do set of documents about China economy, but it may not belong to China economy. For example, we grab a Japanese yen, which is very popular, including US dollars, is very popular in China economy because they do trading. The Japanese yen is, is used for trading in Asia. So it's very popular, but we actually say the, Chinese, uh, the Japanese yen, we throw it up, you have lots of siblings. They compete. That means China has to compete with other countries in that dimension because China belongs to the dimension of the country. Okay, you have Japan, you have Hong Kong, you have you know, Australia, you have uh, US. So once you throw Japanese yen, the Japanese, Japan immediately grab it because it's almost dedicated to Japan, right? So actually, the, you throw Japanese yen, the China, Chinese economy, China economy lost Japanese yen because Japan grabbed it. So it's like an auction. Actually, we do what we call inverse classification. For every word, every phrase you throw it up, all your siblings start trying to grab it. Again, only you really have the power, you, you can retain it. Okay. So in that sense, we find very high quality phrases. I just show you this one, you're probably easier to understand. As we, we got into the New York Times, we, we got like, a, we get into several in, in our queue. One is US gun control, another immigration, domestic policies, law and crime, military, those different sets. Okay. Then you see the documents, what things we grabbed. Okay. You look at the, this one. Gun control, we have gun laws, National Rifle Association, gun rights, background check, gun owner, assault weapon ban, mass shooting, high capacity magazines, all these things, you think this is almost like a human. You think about, you say gun control, what are the most important keywords? We almost give you, this is top 10 list. That means the key phrases you grabbed it is very sharp in the sense, really dedicated to me, not get dedicated to the others, right? So uh, that uh, analysis is very sharp. We even tried to analyze uh, the medical data, because once I show this technique, actually the medical school at the UCLA, they, they invited me to go down there to discuss. They give a very good test for us is this discriminant analysis. This. They are working on heart problems. There are six major categories of heart diseases. So they ask to say six major categories of heart diseases. They have lots and lots of proteins. They just want to say, Mine the PubMed data on cardiovascular disease. Okay. We only mine the abstracts. Okay. Then they say show the ranking, discriminative ranking on each protein. They dedicate to this disease, but not to the others. Okay. Then we use the same program, run it. And they got a very surprised because the top one, everybody knows. But top two and three, actually it's very hard to find. The reason is there are many proteins they show up in many of these heart disease, not dedicated to this one. Okay, we, our discriminant analysis immediately say, this one's gun control is not immigration. Okay, so then both Donald Trump and Hillary will be out because, you know, those are, they, they talk all those issues. And, but uh, the background checking or high capacity magazines will retain gun control, right? So now I get almost to the end. What I want to say is this thing we mine this text data for New York Times or for PubMed or DBRP, Army or NASA, actually is very useful for software engineering. You think about it, okay. You think about it, we do have multi-dimension things. We have programming languages, we have users, we have tags, we have topics, all different things. It is a text cube, you think about this. And the things we actually did, um, phrase mining, typing, and build a hierarchies on the concepts and put them into the right cell of the cube, then you can do comparative analysis to summary, do a lot of statistics, actually is happening or will be useful for not only for the GitHub software itself, even for GitHub, you know, like, uh, like uh, troubleshooting those kind of media. Okay, you probably can see it will be very useful because people will have no time 
or to read every piece of news media, or even the documents in every software okay, in GitHub. This is just a tremendous. But you can automate it. Okay. So that's what we think is quite interesting. So finally, what I would say is mining structures from massive unstructured text database. It's a big challenge, but it's very exciting because that opens the door for us to automate the whole thing. You think about it, if people nowadays, Amazon can give you like Alexa, those Echo, you know, to be automated, and people think it's so amazing, why we cannot do it for our text, right? We, we should be able to do it, you know, as long as we put enough research effort. So uh, what I say is, it will help software engineering. That's why I say the answer is yes. Okay. But how to do it is still a big challenge. Okay. But we think you know, we, we get some experience on those kind of text data. Of course, we never touch the GitHub data. But the interesting thing was this. Okay. DARPA recently funded one project. Actually, I was in it. It's Tarek is the PI. Okay. And what they want to do, they call social sim. That means they want the social media to do simulation, to do analysis of social media. But the interest, very interesting thing is they say the first test on whether people can do it, can automate it, is GitHub social media. Okay. People, of course, there are Facebook social media, Google social media. Those big companies are doing it. Okay. They say the first test on all those universities, all research groups, they want us to first mine the social media on GitHub. Okay. That uh, is a very interesting one. Uh, that also motivated me to say, you know, this stock can link to this NASA, to this Starper project because it, it's so exciting. Okay. So if you look at our past work, the evolution paths, you probably can see, I start with the textbook on data mining and getting to link mining, getting to heterogeneous information networks. And all these, actually, including this heterogeneous information network, the PhD student got a, got a dissertation award. And now she's a professor in UCLA. And uh, Chi Wang, you know, he's a, another student got a dissertation award. He is a Microsoft research uh, researcher. But his thesis is mining latent entity structures. And the most recent work, actually just published this year, is freeze mining from massive text and its applications by Jia Lu Liu and the Jing Bo Shang. Jia Lu actually just graduated last year joined Google Research. And Jing Bo Shang is this year, uh, Google actually give Google PhD fellowship. In North America, in the category of structured data and database, he's the only one in North America got this award. Okay. That simply says Google really liked this research. Okay. Because it, it may be you know, very interesting to them as well. Okay. So the study actually has been funded by, you know, you can see we got an Army Research Lab, NSF, NIH, DARPA, you know, lots of other uh, Microsoft, Google actually fund us as well. Okay. So that's uh, some research papers. So I'm done. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for a very interesting talk. Uh, it really shows promise in terms of the vast amount of work that's been done in software engineering. Uh, yesterday, we heard a number of talks that went into more in-depth analysis, uh, perhaps based upon pulling code from GitHub, uh, everything from inferring invariance to uh, seeing if uh, proofs that have been done on one version could be reused for another version. So you're kind of starting in from the top, looking at phrases that might be in documentation, an article about something. People are coming up from the bottom, looking at the very structured text and retrieval mechanisms that go deep into semantics. Do you see any way of being able to pull those two together and perhaps getting something that is more than just uh, two disparate ways of looking at uh, software engineering artifacts? Yeah, this is a, actually a very good question. Uh, 
In most uh, our tax group, including including this, is actually the people giving the data are structured portion and unstructured portion. Okay. Here we, of course, I give a one extreme is you even need to extract a year or topic or country. In many cases, even when we go deal, dealing with NASA cases, they actually give us the data is more like a pretty much high dimensional plus text. High dimension means you may give us a date, the flight, and the aircraft, or those information, or even weather. Okay, those information are structured data. Okay. Uh, you don't need to extract it, but uh, once you get into a pilot note or something, it's unstructured. Here, basically, I show even if you purely give us unstructured one, we will be able to grab some structures, grab some dimensions, and when they, we can get a type, get a phrase. But I think actually what you said is very true. We actually think that's exactly, if you look at my last uh, slides, the last words, last uh, sentence was let's work together. Because uh, we did not really get into software engineering, you know, anything deep, because uh, I deeply buried into this text and uh, information networks, those things. Uh, I barely or uh, read any recent articles on the software engineering researchers' work. But that's exactly the good point, is uh, people have different focus and different expertise. We need to work together. We get some technique you may be able to use. You get something we can learn quite a lot. Uh, we need to mind both structured and structured. The text cube actually, is, uh, if you look at the original design, we have a structured part and unstructured part. That's exactly the two ends can get together. That means the structured part, like a GitHub, they already give me what's the name of the software, and who are the inventors, which universities, or something. They already give you this information. But some other specification, that part is unstructured part. So we actually need to get these things together. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So that's more like semi-structure, and now you say that the text group that uh, can you leverage the part that's really structured to support the... Yeah, actually that's a question It's quite related to the previous question. Actually, the te most of code, you have documentations, you have uh, related research papers associated with it, but you have the code part, okay? And the code part actually need uh, software engineers to get into this part, to, get a different blocks, different functions. Uh, that part essentially is definitely you are the experts. And the other structure part is already there. Okay. That structure part can help mine the unstructured part. For example, okay, you know this one is about a database algorithm, or the other one is about machine learning uh, software. You actually already can categorize and classify them into the right big cell, big, big portion. But you still want to further further classify them automatically. Uh, you, you need to find the similarity. The similarity, for example, the similarity is not just based on the keywords because people actually can write keywords in a subtly different way. You think they are different, actually they are the same. So if you use embedding, use clustering, you will be able to link them together. For example, you say, I want to find similar softwares. I write them my spec. Your spec may or may not be the software engineering people or machine learning people's jargon but you actually imply you really want to use this particular software. And your keywords were implicitly a proxy match to those keywords. They are going to recommend those one to you, right? So that, that's actually the power. You, you can do a lot of similarity search. You don't need anybody to write exactly the same word to match your algorithm, right? Yeah, but anyway, I think there are lots of room to be done. Uh, I think if we can create a, such a tool uh, both top part and back, the, the, the bottom part, a structured part and unstructured part can be integrated. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. David? Hi, David. <laughs> Thank you for the excellent talk. Uh, so uh, you have a, a, a general purpose work that have work on uh, general purpose text, for example, uh, New York Times, and you've shown that your technique is applicable to specific domains, for example, military and also healthcare. 
I wonder uh, what uh, steps need to be done to go from a general purpose technique to a specific domain. And then maybe we can also, in the future, join your call for arms in order to make this uh, more uh, applied to software engineering uh, yes. context. Yeah. yeah, this is a very, very good, to, very good question. Okay. The specific domain, for example, once you get into medical domain, Medical domain, they have lots of curated, well-structured, for example, this is the gene, this is the disease, this is drugs. They already have lots and lots of those repository down there, okay? You actually do not need to mine them. Of course, they, it may not be complete. You get a new article, so you probably can enrich it. But in the meantime, you need to use those types of structure thing to help you to do the mining, okay? Th that's very important. You, you can see we, show New York Times, we just use wiki. Wiki actually has types as well. You, you say, Barack Obama is a person, is a politician or something. You actually can immediately, based on the wiki, based on free base, you will be able to find it. Okay. That's actually the domain knowledge. Domain knowledge is very important. If you mine, for example, medical record, you just use wiki, you may not get as ac good accuracy as you can use like a gene bank, a geo, you know, all those things. So the very important thing is every domain should have some kind of domain knowledge be encoded as some kind of standard, okay? Then that one will become our distant training set. Remember, people said a weekly training or distant training is very useful because nobody wants to label a massive number of things. But if the distant is too distant, you will not get a very good result. You just think about this. If you give me an English wiki, you ask me to mine Chinese articles, there's no way you can do it, right? You have to give me a Chinese wiki. But on the other hand, if you give me an English wiki, you ask me my medical documents, I may not do a good job because I have those gene banks, why I don't use it, right? So this, to some extent is we need domain knowledge as a knowledge base. Then you can use this method because we still need a distant training, even if it's distant, is not too distant, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great talk, thank you very much. <clears throat> when you apply data mining yes. to plenty of data that is around and you use this to make guidance for the next, for, to make recommendations in software engineering or elsewhere, to some extent, you always run the risk of being fixed in the present because you're learning from what's already there and you are perpetuating this present into the future. Yes. And we have this problem in data mining also, you know, when we are yes. learning from existing data, when that we are perpetuating biases that exist. Right. And when we are <coughs> biases that exist because they are fixed in our present. So I wonder, isn't there, isn't there a risk of excessive data mining then, um, <clears throat> then in the end hindering science and progress because we would be more fixed on things that are rather than thinking about things that could, that could eventually be and promoting our authorities and creativities in that way? Okay. This is a problem in software engineering but also for society. And I wonder yes, what I think this is a very, very interesting problem. And to some extent, it's also a little philosophical, right? <laughs> so, but I think one thing is you need to use data, use massive data to do mining. The reason is a lot of NRP people is saying, I grab this document. I want to very thoroughly just fully understand it, fully, you know, get this one understand, uh, suppose I do not read any other articles. Actually, this method, our method you can see is anytime we want to mine, we actually get a massive number of documents because mm -hmm. only the massive number you get, get statistics, okay? So that's a reason. But on the other hand, this mining is still a tool. That means you get more like from your statistics, get some insight, but does not say we can replace any creation. Okay, that means even we can do some very limited inference or prediction, but that prediction is just a grain of salt. You cannot treat mm -hmm. it so seriously. <laughs> that means the real one is still a person. Mm -hmm. We can do, for example, this cube can say, oh, this accident is related, close related to these things, okay? But 
what exact thing you still need people to invest or need to predict. So the, the real inside eventually is human, is person, experienced expert. Okay. This one just give you some kind of statistics probability, give you some insight based on the massive data. On the other hand, you need domain specific data because if you do not have massive data right in this domain, the, the thing you get, for example, if you think about it, uh, we say deep learning, you can even go down. Okay. That you have to get lots of deep learning paper. You look at their different articles, different uh, associations, you can further classify them. Okay. If you don't get this, there's no way you can go down. Right? So that means we do need a lot of data and a lot of domain specific data. But on the other hand, I should say we should not be bound with this data. They are not God. They are just the statistics. <laughs> okay. Great. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Before we put these words here, we'd like to make a quick announcement uh, for the banquet tonight to show the directions. And uh, uh, while Max connects the laptop, I'll tell you there are two interesting things going on tonight at the banquet. Um, first, there will be uh, the awards ceremony. We'll give the awards, the best paper awards and other awards, uh, which is interesting, is that we are going to have a band of uh, singers, uh, and um, uh, uh, they should uh